Hey guys, video 27 for the post-trib pre-wrath rapture position. Uh, I want to focus on Matthew 24 verses 29 through 31 and why some people would call that the second coming in the Lord and what is the second coming of the Lord. Now, of course, Matthew 24, 29 through 31 says immediately after the tribulation, you see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory and he gathers together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of earth to the uttermost part of heaven. And many people, in fact, one person has even commented, well, that's just the second coming of the Lord. To which I say, amen, I agree. That is the second coming of the Lord. The first time he came in the first century, of course, he was crucified, was buried, uh, rose again uh, as our Messiah. When he comes the second time, it is for his saints. It is to gather together his elect. Now, I think what the individual was referring to was that at the end of the seven years, Jesus comes back on a white horse and he's referring to that as his second coming. And I guess he would refer to the rapture as his revealing or just when he comes for his saints as not a coming at all. But the Bible, I want to show you and prove to you that the Bible actually calls the rapture his second coming. Look at 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13 through 17. I think everybody would agree that's the rapture. It says, but I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw are not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's his first coming. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. We're about to see his second coming when uh, uh, Christ comes back. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, watch this, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So the Bible actually calls it the second coming, the coming of the Lord. Unless this is coming 1.5, then this is indeed the second coming. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. In verse 1, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. You say, well, in Matthew 24, that's the second coming. And, and I don't know what they mean by he gathers together his elect with the sound of a trumpet. Where in Revelation 19, when he comes back on a white horse, is he blowing a trumpet and gathering up to his elect? In fact, we read that the armies that are in heaven, they follow him and they come back with him. There's no trumpet. There's no meeting in the clouds. Jesus comes back. The armies come back with him and he vanquishes his enemy. So when it says in Matthew 24, 31, that he gathers together his elect, the same wording is used here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where it says, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. You could use the word caught up. You could use the word rapture, even though rapture is not a Bible word. We get it from raptura or a snatching or a catching up. But it's also called a gathering when he gathers together his elect or when we're gathered to meet the Lord in the air in the clouds. Any way you want to call it, that is indeed a rapture. And Matthew 24 is indeed talking about the second coming. If you want to call Revelation anything, Revelation 19, I guess you'd call it his third coming. Because uh, once he takes us out of here and takes us home to heaven, he comes back three and a half years later. And the tribulation's three and a half years. He comes and gets us. Then there's three and a half years of his wrath where we're in heaven with him. And then he comes back to vanquish his enemies at Armageddon. So guys, don't let this word um, magic of second coming throw you off. Uh, there's no other thing that Matthew 24 can point to than the second coming of Jesus.